adorable baby unicorn crochet pattern series and today we're going to finish our baby unicorns so until this point uh, intro and part two you will have created your body and put them all together and added beauty decals and I'll explain those beauty decals a little bit later I know I suggested stars or hearts or little mini suns or even the leaf but um, I can't help myself I was obsessed with rainbows last week so I made a rainbow sun and then I actually made a rainbow um, and I think he's super fancy so that's why he's got two completely different beauty decals but anyway not important <laughs> today we're going to do um, the tail the mane the horn the ears and the eyes we're going to put them all on and then you'll be completely finished and I know what you're thinking why does the baby unicorn have a pair of wings I don't know what else to say except that somewhere along the week he turned into a Pegasus too? I don't know. I think I'm totally reliving my childhood here. But anyway, <laughs> we might talk about these wings in a future episode, maybe a bit of an expansion pack. If you're interested, let me know by thumbs up and down below. And uh, we'll do an extra special uh, mini add-on tutorial if you want to see wings too. But let me know. Otherwise, uh, we will just continue with finishing our magical baby unicorn. You ready guys? Let's go to the table! <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to get comfortable here. We are going to start with the ears and we are going to quickly move through um, the little smaller uh, detail bits because they're really really simple and I always feel that when you start a project or even when you're starting the third part of a project if you do the simple quick pieces first it kind of builds your confidence and then you have more energy and strength to get to the end because if you're anything like me um, I kind of like stall out sometimes with projects and I don't always finish them because I don't know why but anyway we're gonna start with the ears take our large hook that we were using for the body and we are going to use our body color which is the thick yarn and we are going to create a slip knot and you do that by creating a circle and pulling the string up through the circle and then just pulling both ends. That's pretty basic. So that's our slip knot. We're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Pretty simple so far. We're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. We're going to single crochet into the next chain. And we're going to double crochet into the last chain. So that's wrap through the hole, grab the yarn. You've got one, two, three on your hook. Wrap, go through two loops. Wrap, go through two loops. So looks like an ear already, right? We're going to chain one. This is the bottom of the ear, and we're going to give it a little bit of um, strength. So we're going to chain three times, or I should say slip stitch three times across the bottom. Just stick your needle in anywhere it'll go, and just end at the end, like that. And then we're going to cut our yarn with a nice long tail, because that's what we're going to use to sew it to the body. And we're going to fasten off. Ta -da! And there are your ears. Now go ahead and make two. And uh, you can just point them up a little bit. Go ahead and make your second ear and we'll jump right into the eyes. Okay, so we're going to make the eyes now. And the eye is built in two parts. There's the ovular round or the ovular white part. It's an oval, a nice oval white piece. And then there's a round black piece. And um, this is all very, very basic. Uh, it's nothing that we haven't really done before. It's just sort of a different method of counting. So we're going to start with the white piece. We're going to make a uh, cinch circle. And we all know how to do that now. So we create a loop, kind of like if you're doing a slip knot. And you grab your hook, which is a 4.25 millimeter hook. Go through the circle, grab the yarn, 
and then chain one and then you've got this little circle to use. We're going to single crochet six into this circle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's six. So from six single crochet, we're actually going to go to a total of 10. And we're going to do that by single crocheting twice into the next two stitches, once into this stitch, twice into the next two, and once into the last one. So here we go. One, oops, that first stitch is always a doozy. Two, there's our first two, two more into the next stitch, three, four, once into the third stitch, one, twice into the next stitch, one, two, twice into the next stitch, one, two, and once into the last stitch. There we go. Now we're going to slip stitch into this stitch, which is the next one. And you know what? We're going to slip stitch into this one up here. And what we've basically done is created an, an oval. There you go, just like that. All right, and you're going to go ahead and make a second one of those. Um, also, snip off a long string, because uh, that's what you're going to sew it to the head of your cute little baby unicorn with. All right, go ahead and make a second one. Now we're going to make the pupil, which is the black part of the eyeball. So you grab your black yarn, and same thing, we're going to make a cinch circle. And into this cinch circle, we are going to single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Since it's shut, we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet. I know that's hard to see because this is black, but into the first stitch you made, you're just going to slip stitch. Come here. That's it. And then you're going to cut a long string for sewing and fasten off. So I'm just going to pull that extra tail to the back of the eyeball. That just gets it out of the way. And I'm going to pick the bottom of my eye and just start Gonna knot them at the back and trim the excess. Done. All right, so we've done the eyes, we've done the ears. Now we're gonna do the horn. And the horn is, the horn is a very personal thing. So, um, if you're not content with the size of, say, that little guy's horn, and you want something bigger or you want something smaller, just remember that the kind of yarn you choose, so the size of the yarn and the size of the hook that you choose, are going to greatly influence that. Um, if you're the kind of person who kind of wants to put the ears on first and then decide, you know, maybe like how big you want the corn afterwards, then go ahead. But um, I'm just going to show you the pattern that I, I made up. And you guys can add an extra row to the bottom if you want it to be a little taller, or you can just leave it as is. And this is what I'm doing for the horn. So sort of like before, when we made the hooves, 
I'm going to hold two strands of yarn together. So I'm using just a simple worsted weight um, white yarn, but I'm using the Red Heart Stardust in blue because it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, and I just want to add that little bit of extra magic to the unicorn. Um, so I'm going to hold these two together, and I'm going to use... I'm going to use the 4.25 millimeter hook and if I feel that this is too big then I will downsize it but I think based on the thickness of what this yarn works out to be and the um, size that my eyes came out at I think I want the horn to be somewhat similar so I'm going to use my 4.25 millimeter hook so we're going to start with a cinch circle and unlike the other ones we've done, we're only going to single crochet three into the center. Remember you're holding two together, so it's a bit tricky. Try not to split too much of your yarn. <laughs> and three. Okay, one, two, three. Cinch it shut. And here's where we get a little funky. So, we're starting with three, not four. So this might be a little, a little tricky for you, so be patient with yourself. We're going to work into the next stitch, which is the first single crochet we made. And we're going to put two single crochet into that stitch. One, two. Then we're going to, and you want to like just sort of bump the the top part out a little bit because that makes it easier to use. Into the next stitch we're going to single crochet once and into the next stitch we're going to single crochet once. Aha! Got you there, didn't I? Alright, so you now have a total of four stitches. Into the next stitch we're going to single crochet once then we're going to single crochet twice into the next stitch. And it's a bit tight still, so just be patient. Keep your little tails out of the way. One, and two. We're going to single crochet once into the next stitch. One, and we're going to single crochet once into the next stitch. There we go. Now, we are at a total of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm, maybe that's five. Here we go. Single crochet into the next stitch once. Two single crochet into the next stitch. One. Two. Single crochet into the next stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. One, two. Now, you should be at one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, here we go. I'm going to just even it out by putting in one more single crochet. All right, now, it's an oddball pattern. And the whole purpose of that is because you're trying to create something that sort of twists. Depending on the thickness of your yarn, it may not look like it twists at all. It might just look like a nice even cone, and that's fine. But the idea is that it's going to twist a little bit. So at this point, I like to put it on his forehead. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Look, he's got a little bunty thing. And I like to take a look at the depth of it, the width of it. I'm pretty content with the width or the circumference of the bottom. So at this point, I'm just going to add a few more rows to make it taller. So uh, from this point on, I'm just going to single crochet all the way around for a couple more rows. And then I'm going to hold it back up on his forehead and decide if it's tall enough. So here we go. Just going to crochet all the way around. And this is sort of an organic um, little 
detail. And by organic, I mean you can sort of build it any way you want so long as you get an approximate cone shape or horn shape. And you can size it to taste, quite literally. So, um, If you want it to sort of sit at a funny angle, you can make it an uneven bottom. It's entirely up to you. And I'm just coming around. I think I'm liking the... okay. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do one more row. Okay. Yep, that's it. There's his horn. I'm done. So now I'm going to fasten off, and I'm going to do that by slip stitching into the next stitch. And I'm going to snip a nice long tail just for sewing it to the body. That's both of the strings together. And just pull your tails right through that loop. There you go. So now we've made the ears, we've made the horn, we've made the eyes, and we're just going to sew it all onto his face. All right. I like to start with the eyes. Um, oh. I'm going to place them right on the bridge of his nose. So if you remember, we created this little ridge here so that he has sort of an ex we, he's got a, an accentuated little nose and then his head fattens up a little bit just like a, a real horse does and we're going to put his eyes or at least I am you can put his eyes anywhere you want I'm gonna put his eyes somewhat equidistant from each other across the bridge of his nose and like most of the things I do I'm just going to place it there and start stitching and in between stitches I'm going to sort of just step back and make sure it's still where I want it to be. Uh, because the nice thing about sewing crocheted articles together is that you have a bit of flexibility. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to hold his little eye right there and I'm going to start sewing. There we go. And once you've gotten to the end, you're going to put your last stitch in and you're going to bring your you're going to bring your needle out through the center of the forehead somewhere and just let your tail hang because what we're going to do is after we've sewn on the second eye we're going to bring that tail out through the same hole we're going to knot our two strings together pull the strings back into the head that keeps your eyes knotted it also keeps you from having to put some sort of bulky knot somewhere on the face of your little unicorn and go ahead and put on your second eye Alright, so we've put on his eyes, pink, pink, and now I'm going to put the horn on. And the reason I'm going to do this and not the ears is because I want, um, I want to comfortably center it in the forehead of my little baby unicorn. And I want to be able to have space to sew all the way around it uh, because it's going to be a little more tricky to sew all the way around this thing than it is to just sew through the flat bottom of the ears, which we will do momentarily. So first, we are going to pick a spot. Now, it could be down here, it could be up here. I think it's going to be right there in the center of his forehead. Is that the center? Yeah, that's the center. And like everything else, I'm just going to hold it in place. I'm going to pick up a couple of stitches and then stand back and make sure that I'm still putting it where I want it to be. So let's see here, that's my first stitch. At this point, depending on how big your little unicorn is, you may want to put a bit of stuffing in. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just a little bit. It's always good to have a little tiny wee bit of stuffing hanging around when you're doing these bits because uh, you never know when you might want to just pad up a spot and that should keep it in the shape that I want it to be. 
However, if you've got different sized yarn, you may find that you don't need any stuffing at all. So that is entirely up to you guys. There we go. Okay. Now, because I've used two strings, I'm going to take one string, I'm going to pass it under a stitch, any stitch will do, so just one of them, like that. So I'm all the way around, I've completely sewed through every stitch. Now I'm going to knot these two together, nice and tight, and I'm going to take the whole thing and push it back into the head of the unicorn. So because I don't have two things, um, and usually if I sew on two things like eyes or ears, you have two strings that you can pull through a common hole and then knot together. But because this is a single thing, I'm going to basically split the two sewing strings in half and create the knot that way on either side of a stitch. And that will make for a smaller knot, so it won't be as obvious. And then you just do like you usually do and weave those strings into the head of your baby. And there you have it. There's his horn. I think he's getting very excited. Okay, now we're going to put on his ears. And the ears are probably the simplest part. Um, again, it's a sort of an organic thing. Um, you're going to just grab these. Take your end, your little tiny tail end, and just bury it in the back of that ear somewhere, uh, just so it's kind of out of the way, and then trim off the excess. There you go. And do the same with this one. This is, again, just an aesthetic. Because my tails are so short, I couldn't really pull them down into the head of the unicorn without them probably popping back out later. So, there we go. All right, so here's our two ears. Next, we're going to pinch them slightly. If you've ever seen a real horse, um, and most of us have seen pictures of horses, if not seen actual horses up close, their ears aren't fully tri triangular. They're kind of pinched a little bit. They're, they're literally made like scoops so that they can twist almost all the way around because, as you know, horses are prey animals. They are not... Um, they're not carnivores, so they're actually the animal that other animals prey on, and their ears are designed to pull in sounds from everywhere they possibly can. So if you ever see a horse, you know exactly where something's moving by the direction of his ears, because he will turn his ears in that way to scoop up as much sound as he can. And uh, that's why they've got kind of a little, a little scoop to them. So we're going to just pinch the corners together a little bit like this and if it helps you can thread up your needle now if you need that giant yarn needle that I had in the last episode go right ahead and, and use that one I just noticed that this one is I mean that's got a pretty big eye on it so I'm using this one just because it's a little smaller but it doesn't matter you can use whatever one you want um, if it helps you you can just pull your string through to the end and just Pinch it loosely together that way, and then you can sew it on. And I'm going to sew both my ears onto either side of the horn, just so they sit up on top of his forehead. And I'm going to just pick up a couple stitches. I'm going to kind of whip stitch his ears on. So I'm going to go through a stitch on the head of the unicorn and then um, so front to back and then through a stitch on the ear and so on and so on and this way I will sew on his ears and remember there's only three single crochet across the bottom 
of our, or I should say, three slip stitch across the bottom of our ear. So there's really not a lot um, to sew. And if you want to go back and forth across it a couple times, feel free to do so, especially if this little baby unicorn is going to go to somebody who's a little rough or likes to carry things by the ears. Um, you might want to just make sure it's that much sturdier. Otherwise, when you think it's sturdy enough, take the string that you have left and I'm going to pull it through a hole in the back of the head. And when I put on ear number two, I'm going to do the same thing, knot both strings together and then pull them back down into the head. <laughs> All right, so we've done our eyes, we've done our horn, we've done our little ears, and that completes the face. And now all we have to do is the mane and the tail. And that is what we're going to do next. Okay, so now we're going to do the tail. And we're going to use our pretty tail yarn. And like I said in the last uh, couple of episodes, this is Twinkle a DK Sparkle. Um, there's also a ball uh, made by Karen Yarns that's also similar. It's got the same kind of twinkle running through it. Um, it's a skinnier yarn, maybe about a size three. So it's a lightweight worsted yarn. Uh, I'm going to use a three millimeter hook for the tail and also for the mane. So from here on out, I'm using a three millimeter sized hook. And a little note about the tail and the mane before we start. I am going to make it uh, roughly the same length as I did with this one. This is 20, like a, a, each length is technically 25 chains long. If you want something a little longer, then you can make them longer. So 30, 35, whatever you like, but this is essentially 25 chains long. And because of the curling that it does, it sort of like holds it up a little bit. So if you want a slightly longer tail, then consider that when you're making, um, when I say chain 25, consider that each one of these is 25 chains long. So if you want it a little longer, then you make it a little longer. And when we get to the same, it'll be the same sort of concept once we get up here, and I'll explain that at that point. But uh, for now, we're going to start with the tail. We're going to make a slip knot, and we're going to chain 25. Try to keep them nice and loose if you can. Um, if you're anything like me, that's troubling, but <laughs> try to keep them loose. Now, into the first, or I should say, into the second chain from the hook. So not the first one, but the second one. You always treat that first chain like a, a turning chain. You're going to single crochet five times into the second chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to single crochet five into the next chain, and you're going to single crochet five into each chain along this row. So you're going to end up with quite a number of single crochets by the end of it, but I'm just going to show you a few um, just a few stitches worth, and then I'll leave you to your own devices uh, for a little bit. Feel free to pause the video if you have to. But I just want to show you what is going to start happening. So I've already completed the first 10 single crochet, and I'm just about to complete 15. So that's three chains worth of single crochets. And you'll see what's happening between beneath my fingers is that the entire project is starting to, to twist underneath my fingers. So here I am in the fourth chain. I'm going to single crochet five times into this one as well. And it's starting to get really monkey. So this is what you do. 
after you get a few of your chains worked, so at this point I've worked four chains, I've put five single crochet into each one, grab the end and just twist away from you like this and it kind of gets it out of your way. So I'm going to do the next one. One, two, three, four, and five. Hey, there's a knot in here. And I'm going to twist again. So that will basically keep it out of my way. I'm going to work this knot in here. Um, two, three, four, five, and next chain. I'm just going to work over these little tails. One, two, three, four, stay with me here, and five. Okay, same thing. I'm going to just keep twisting it. That keeps it out of my way. It also turns it into the, the little twisty, spirally thing. Uh, all right, I think you've got that figured out. You're going to go ahead and continue all the way back up the chain that you, the chain foundation row, putting five single crochets into each chain, and I'll see you when you get back up to the top. Okay, so I'm just getting back up to the top and I'm continuing to spiral my spiral in one direction. I'm at the last chain and I'm going to do my five. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so that is the last set of five. I'm going to slip stitch into that last chain, then I'm going to chain 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right. And just like the last one, I'm going to single crochet five, starting with the second chain from the hook, five single crochet in each chain, all the way up this foundation row until I get very back to the very beginning, which is the chain that's in common with the first one that I made. And then I'm going to repeat the process for as many long curly bits as I want in the tail. And just in case you're wondering, this little guy has four. So I put four, oh look at that, I didn't even completely twist that little ones. Mm -hmm. there we go. So there's four in this tail, um, and I thought that was pretty full. You want to keep holding it up to the back end of your pony just to make sure that it's as much as you like or maybe you want to make it bigger. Maybe you want to make yours different lengths. You can do that too because, you know, not all tails are perfectly even. So go ahead, make as many of these as you want, always finishing at the top chain that you have in common with all the other uh, tail lengths. And we will see you once you're finished making all of your tail lengths. Okay, I have just finished making my last spiral length and I have slip stitched into the first ever chain that I created and I know that one because of the tail that's left behind. And now I'm going to simply attach it to the back end of my little baby unicorn and I'm going to put it I'm going to put it right here. So there's my two beauty decals. There's sort of the back end of my, my little unicorn. But horse tails always come kind of 
just out the top. So I'm going to affix it around the post of these two stitches. And I'm going to do that by leaving this, the last loop of the last um, spiral crochet here on my hook. I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to put it through that loop just like that. I'm going to grab my yarn very carefully, pull it back while my entire subdivision cuts their lawn. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we are surrounded by lawn cutters today. All right. And I'm going to chain one. And just for good measure, I'm going to do it one more time. So put the hook through that same spot, grab the yarn, pull it back through, and through that loop. There we go. And I'm going to cut off a little bit of a tail, not too much. I'm going to pull it through that loop to fasten it off. Keep splitting the yarn here. There we go. And then I'm going to take the tail of the beginning and the end. I'm going to tie them both together. And then I'm going to pull one through and do it again. There we go. And then I'm going to take those two little ties and I'm going to weave them in to the body. Oof, tricky. Okay, maybe I'll stick my needle in first. All right, now you can, if you want, um, put in another uh, couple of stitches and just sit it up higher or reposition it a bit lower. Whatever you want to do in order to make it sit exactly the way you want it to. But there you go. There is your tail. And the tail is done. Bum, bum, bum. Now we're going to do the mane. So, I have trouble saying the word mane. Mane, mane, mane. This, as you've probably guessed, the mane is made very similarly to the tail. And I am going to grab a safety pin. So we take a safety pin. Now, if you don't need a safety pin to mark your beginning stitch or your end stitch or any of your stitches, then more power to you. Uh, I don't usually use them, but because I, I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a safety pin just because it's small. Uh, first, we're going to create a slip knot and we're going to begin chaining. Uh, we're going to chain a length that will go from the back of the horn all the way down as long as I want it to. So for example, I'm going to make sure it covers the back of the head and maybe goes down halfway down the neck. So start chaining. Uh, one, two, one, three, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so I've done 25. Let's see what that does. Well, that's going to be pretty much as long as I want it to be. I won't want it any longer than that. So 25 is the length of chain that I am going to use, but you guys make one as long as you like it to be. Once you've got the length of chain as long as you want, you're going to take your safety pin, you're going to mark that last chain with it. And that's just so if you get called away from your project, you don't have to worry about all the difficulty that's uh, involved with counting back, because this is going to get quite busy, this length of chain. What you're going to do is you're going to ch you're going to chain another length. So if you want them this long, make them 25. If you want them a little shorter, make them a little shorter. One, two, three, four, five, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so I'm going to do 25. Now I'm going to do exactly what I did with these ones. So I'm going to do five single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and in each chain all the way back up to 
just before I get to the chain that's marked with the, the, sink, the safety pin. So I'm going to do five single crochet in each chain right up until this last one just before the one I've marked with the safety pin. So here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm just going to finish the last five single crochets into that last stitch, that last chain, just before the chain I marked with the safety pin. So here we go. One, two, oops, three, four, and five. All right, so that is the first spiral of hair made. Now. I am going to slip stitch into this chain that the safety pin is on. So, okay, so I've slip stitched into the chain that the safety pin is on. I'm going to slip stitch into the chain immediately next to that chain. I'm going to remove the safety pin and I'm going to put it into the the same chain that I just slip stitched into. So basically I've moved it one to the left. Now, I am going to chain 25. One, two, three, four, five. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right. So this length of chain is what's going to go down. This is sort of the spine of the main. And every single length of chain that I make off of each one of these chains, I'm going to do the five single crochet into beginning with the second chain from the hook and in each one back until just before where the safety pin's sitting. Then I'm going to single crochet, I'm going, sorry, I'm going to slip stitch into that stitch with the safety pin, slip stitch into the stitch next to where the safety pin is sitting, move the safety pin, safety pin, and then chain five and continue. And I'm going to do that, or I'm sorry, chain 25 and continue the same pattern all the way along. Now the reason I'm going to use that safety pin is because after a while it is going to get a little kind of messy looking. Um, but as long as you just always move your safety pin over to the next stitch, you should be fine. And really it doesn't have to be super perfect and you can fake it if you have to when you're sewing it down. So I will see you at the end of 25 lengths of 25. And once we're at the end, we will then sew the mane onto the baby unicorn. So here I go. Okay. I am finally nearing the end of the last string of 25 chains off of the mane foundation row of 25 chains. This has been an utter marathon, but I told you guys back in the beginning that the main was sort of complicated, but not, but sort of. So anyway, almost nearing the finish line here. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that I switched up some of the little spirals. So sometimes I did five single crochets into the chain and sometimes I did four single crochets into the chain. Um, just just switched it up a little bit. It makes them just a little thinner. It doesn't matter. You can do them all five or all four. Um, all five is going to make for nice thick um, curls and there's arguably a negligible difference between the two but um, like I say, if you miss a stitch here and there, it really doesn't matter because this is going to be such a curly head of bouncy curls that no one's really going to notice. So just putting that out there. Remember to keep spinning all of your little coils around and around to get them all to go in the right direction. And this is the last set of single crochets and then I have been moving my, my safety pin all the way along so now I've got it marked where I have to slip stitch into. I am now finished so I'm going to remove 
the safety pin. And you'll also know that I, I, I ran out of, I actually ran out of purple. Um, so I just changed back to the pink that I'd done on the previous unicorn because I love both of these colors. And obviously, it's going to look super fabulous. <laughs> 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 All right. So once you've finished, make sure you cut yourself a nice long tail because you're going to sew it um, to your unicorn with that tail. And then just fasten off. Okay. Okay, so now is the part that's relatively easy, believe it or not. You're going to hold up your mane by your two ends, and you're going to very carefully go through the whole length of the mane, just spinning it so that you bring the foundation chain row to the top. And it looks like a mess, but obviously it's not. And you just find that foundation row all the way down till you get to the very end. There it is there. And this is what you're going to put along your head and neck. So don't worry if it looks a bit messy or complicated. You're going to work on one side only. And as you, like everything else that I do, as you work, you can just kind of keep flipping things over and making sure you're in the right place. So bring your long tail to the side, or whatever hand you're going to sew with. Take your end and put it right at the base of the horn, right behind the horn on the top of his head. And you're going to thread up your tail and you're going to put that tail in find the top here there we go going to put the top one down now i am going to actually knot this just to be on the safe side and i'll weave in this little purple tail later there we go so there, now it's, now it's attached. So now I can very slowly work all the way down through every single every single little single crochet, or I should say every single chain I made along the foundation row. I'm going to so that all the way down the back of the middle, as close to the middle as I can get. All the way down the back of his head. And you know what? It seems to me that I am just naturally sewing over top of that tail. So that's where I'm going to leave it, I guess. So just take your time. This isn't a rush. This is the final finish of your fancy little amigurumi baby unicorn. And you want to make sure that you do it as nicely as possible because, you know, our hair is our crowning glory, right? So the same is definitely true for magical little unicorns. Just take your time. Keep sort of laying the hair down and making sure it falls where you want it to. And Work your way all the way down the back of the head, down the length of the neck, and I will see you when you get to the end. All right, so I'm just putting in the final few stitches along the back of this mane through the back of the neck. And if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can also go work, if, you're, if your tail's long enough, that is, you can also sort of work your way back up the top, like all the way sort of to the top, um, just in case you wanted to make sure it was extra strong and um, it was really on there. So I'm just going to work a few quick stitches 
back up the top and uh, I'm not too concerned that this is pink on top of purple because this is a this is a rainbow unicorn after all and much of the sewing um, in fact all of the sewing along the spine of your mane isn't really going to be seen uh, when the mane hair is all sort of like lying there all nice and fluttery so I'm not too worried about the pink versus purple and frankly I'm always kind of excited when I finally use up another ball of yarn because maybe one of these days I'll do a, a video on all of my yarn or my yarn stash or what I frequently refer to as my yarn store because it is just an unbelievable warehouse. Some people have you know storehouses of food and some people have storehouses of money, maybe wine. No, nope, I have a basement full of yarn and uh, every time I eyeball a new ball of yarn uh, usually my husband says, well, honey, you can get it if you want, but aren't you, uh, aren't you sure, you know, maybe you have that already at home. You might want to check first. And he's usually right. I usually have about five versions of it at home, but I can't help it. So, anyway. Then I buy it and it goes into the bins. <laughs> okay. So I have just quickly zipped back up to the top. And now, I'm going to knot this off. It's easier if I put them in my lap. So I'm just going to, nothing fancy, I'm just going to create a little knot in here, just like I would if I was sewing on anything else. So I'm just going to weave this tail in a little bit. And maybe back and forth a couple times, and then I'm just going to cut off the excess. There we go. Then you just sort of bounce them up and down a little bit, and those beautiful, lovely, curly locks <laughs> are just going to naturally fall on either side of his or her head. So I'm going to say that this is probably a girl. Maybe I'll even throw a couple up front. Oh my goodness, you are so cute. Yeah, you are. <laughs> 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 All right. Aww. <laughs> so that was a super doozy of a tutorial. This marks the end of part three. You should now have a totally fantastic stuffed crocheted baby magical unicorn uh, or two. <laughs> and um, that is that. Oh my gosh, look, oh, they're going to ride off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, a couple of last notes. Um, this is the long version of the hair and the super fluffy version of the tail. If you want to do a shorter version like this little guy's um, mane, you can, same thing, the foundation chain um, is going to be as long as you want the mane to stretch from behind the horn down the back of his head and or neck and the individual uh, curly hair bits that you make can be anywhere between 25 long, 25 chains long like this one or about 15, maybe 10 if you want to make them shorter. Uh, obviously, unicorns have really fantastic hair, but if you did the long one uh, just now, then you know how quite a marathon that can be. Um, also, if you use a larger hook, then it will also make your, um, it'll also make them a bit longer and a bit looser. So these are just things to keep in mind if you, you know, down the road you, you uh, make more of these. I'm definitely going to make a few more of these. Um, so yeah. That is that. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and coming and playing with us. This has definitely been one of my favorite projects so far. I am absolutely thrilled with the way that this guy has turned out. And uh, I am going to make many, many more of these down the road. So uh, thank you very much to Linda who made that suggestion way, way back. This has been absolutely awesome. So. Um, Keep those suggestions coming guys. We have a long list growing and we're kind of throwing them all into a hat 
and uh, pulling them out one by one and uh, that's how we're going to sort of structure some of these uh, tutorials coming down the pipe so uh, we'll see what happens next but anyway thanks for tuning in we'll see you guys next time and uh, we will continue to stitch it up together so bye <laughs>